What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to be showing you a crazy technique that allows you to create in-camera transitions after the fact. That means the whips, the pans, all of that stuff can be created using your camera after you shoot. And I'm gonna teach you that in today's tutorial. This will basically allow you to take all of this stationary footage and convert it into something like this. So before we get started, I actually wanna let you know that this technique will crop in your footage a little bit based on how much movement you want. And now the footage I'm using already has an anamorphic crop on it, so I'm gonna get pretty squeezed. However, the setup is pretty easy. Like, let's say we want this section right here. It's all shot pretty standard, some tracking motion. All you have to do is set an endpoint a little bit before and an endpoint a little bit after. Click I to set an endpoint and O to set an out point. And then come up here and click the loop playback button. If you don't see that, click the plus sign, drag the loop playback button down into this window. Now, once you set that up, we can do the fun part. You have to act like your camera is creating those transitions as you're watching it. And that's gonna make sense in a second. All you have to do is take your camera and think about pivoting left and right in a smooth motion and getting some motion all over the place. You don't wanna take your camera and completely go all over the place because Premiere needs to be able to stabilize that and then we're gonna use that data later to reverse stabilize it to create the motion. All right, so this is how you do it, like this slow movements all over the place. So I'm gonna click record on here, and all you have to do is click play and watch your playhead. Whenever you get to a cut, that's when you want to start your motion all over the place, because that's gonna create these motions. I'm gonna do three takes, and we're gonna check out what different motion does within Premiere. All right, here we go. Left. I'm just kind of going all over the place whenever I see a transition, and honestly, it's hard. Like the first time you do it, it, you're gonna be like, I think I just messed up, but you never know what it's gonna look like until you get to Premiere. This next take, I'm gonna do slower motion. So let's restart this from the beginning. This is what slower motion looks like. And for the final take, I'm gonna do a little bit quicker stuff. I'm just gonna kinda move it all over the place while the video's going. All right, you can stop recording and now all we have to do is go into Premiere and match that up and start editing. All right, so now that we're back in Premiere, I wanna show you how do we apply that motion that we just created with the camera. All right, so we know that this is the end point of our footage. So what you have to do is scroll through the footage that you just shot on your camera and wait until you see your start point. Now you don't have to film your computer screen. You can film just about anything, but you have to have some sort of reference point like sound or anything to remember where it started. So I'm gonna use my right and left arrow keys to go to the very start of this frame and then I'm gonna click I on my keyboard to set an in point and then just scroll forward and click O to set an out point. I don't need the audio so my A1 is not selected. All you have to do is drag that clip on top of all of your clips that you want to apply the motion to. Now this should be that entire sequence since everything is according to time. Now all you have to do is click on your video clip and if you aren't in 16 by 9 like I am then you just have to scale up your clip until you don't see the edge anymore. This is where the magic happens. Highlight everything, right click, and select nest. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to nest the sequence. Now head on over to your effects tab and type in warp and drag on warp stabilizer. Let Warp Stabilizer do its thing, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you probably wanna set your smoothness to about 15, because I found out that that works pretty well. As mentioned before, this will also crop in your image a little bit. I'm already on anamorphic footage, so this is going to be a nice little squeeze. 
All right, well, this is what I got, and it currently looks a little weird, but all you have to do is mess around with this additional scale. You can either scale it all the way up to fit your frame, or you can just scale it up to your edges, whatever you want. Now, each take, you're gonna get a different cropping, depending on how much you move. For example, my next take, I should get the full framing. But now if we play this back, you'll see that nothing's really going on. All you have to do is go into your nested sequence and hide your video layer. Now if we go back out and play this back, so this is what it looks like, and it's pretty epic. You can see I have a little warpage going on, but it all depends on how you move your camera. So now I wanna show you each take individually so you can kinda get a reference for what my camera was doing and how fast I was moving. So this is the first take. It looks pretty sweet. It jumps all over the place, our camera's moving, and it kinda looks like we did this in camera. I'm pretty happy with these results, but now let's check out the next take where we actually slowed down the camera movement quite a bit. This is the next take when we slowed down the camera movement a little bit, and as you can see, it's a little bit smoother and not as jarring to the eye. Remember, you can change how fast you are moving the camera, and you can do it in as many takes as you want now that you know how to actually create this effect. This is when I was moving the camera around all over the place at all times. As you can see, it's kind of going all over the place, but this could be epic for a scene that you just wanna add something extra to. Think about it like this. If you want to add more dynamic movement to a sequence that you already have edited, try doing this technique because it might add that little flair you are looking for. Well, that's all I have time for for today. Hopefully you guys learned something. And if you did, let me know down in the comments below and click that like button because I would really appreciate it. As always, I'll see you guys next time.